just be, be out, out with, with us. us to Alaska. You are watching our Alaska Land and Sea series. If you just joining us on this video, we are sailing on radiance of the seas of the Royal Caribbean from Anchorage to Vancouver. This is a one way sailing on the inside passage, making lots of awesome stops along the way and if you haven't seen our previous videos we will leave our alaska playlist in the description below and this video is all about pros, pros and, and cons. cons of specifically radiance of the seas we have done many pros and cons video whether it's at a resort or on a cruise like this one and of course no cruise is perfect they all come with their pros and they all come with their cons and that's what we're going to discuss in this video now mind you a disclaimer we're judging this based on our experience of cruising we cruise a lot and we have a lot of cruise videos and you can check our playlist for cruises that we have done in the past also on our preferences and we speak to many guests while we're here cruising for the seven days and a lot of the pros and a lot of the cons they all kind of agree on uniformly so let's get into the pros and cons of the radiance, radiance of, of the, the seas. seas just, just be, be out, out with us, us. When doing the research for our Alaska trip, a lot of people were mentioning to choose a ship with an indoor pool, specifically for Alaska, because it does get cold outside and an indoor pool would be a nice option. Well, Radiance of the Seas have both the inside pool with the jacuzzi and this is adults only area and the outside pool with two jacuzzis and a separate kids pool if you would like to see the entire walking tour of the ship we will leave the link in the description below so the pro is the indoor pool the con could be for your kids if you do have kids they might want to use the indoor pool but this is adults only and the only option for kids is the outdoor pool but there are a few other pros all the pools are heated the jacuzzis go to about 90 degrees and the pool temperature a little bit less but still really warm the only con would be that there is only one adult jacuzzi and it is indoors we were enjoying the outdoor jacuzzi when it was really nice weather outside but unfortunately we had to share it with kids who were splashing around the roof for this indoor pool actually opens up it is retractable so if you're sailing on the radiance of the seas in any tropical location and want an outdoor adults only area this can offer you just that a couple of pros i would like to point out in this outdoor area first of all you see the totem pole behind me i think it's a really cool addition since it is a, an alaskan cruise they try to add a little theme on the cruise and actually put the totem pole right in the middle of the ship and i want to point out that the water inside the pool is actually a salt water pool and it's heated as well so even though it's chilly outside the water feels pretty good and we have seen a lot of people using the pool even though it's a little chilly out okay let's talk about food right when it comes to cruising everyone loves food and if you guys been following us you know we are foodies so here on the radiance of the seas the dining room area is really cool as far as the layout goes everything is basically centralized and streamlined it seems like a small area in the very beginning when we started we we're like wow this place is really small but i guess because of the amount of people in the ship it didn't feel overcrowded there wasn't times where we really couldn't find a seat and the food the way it's prepared it basically has the same identical thing on the left and on the right this way it doesn't clog the, the area the only thing is that they only have one area where they do egg services in the morning time so if you wanted omelet and you wanted to be made a certain way there was only one station that basically what they would do is they would give you a ticket write down what you want and then they will call a number and you just have to come up a few minutes after you order but again with the layout two stations on both sides where you could get water juices coffee and in the center it's split in two you have the sweets on one side sweets on the other side you 
your main bacon, sausages, stuff like that. Then you have your pancakes area, your fruits and vegetables. Really cool layout. Generally, there is a lot of choices you have here. But a con is that we did find the food a little lacking in quality and also a little lacking in flavor. If you've been on the ship before, let us know your opinion. Drop a comment below. Let us know what you thought of the food. Now, again, this is not only from through us. We have spoke to many of our now friends here on this ship and they have also said the same thing. Some of them cruising for the very first time. Others, they've been on this cruise maybe a few times already and they all agree on the same thing that the food is kind of subpar. Now, as we mentioned before in the beginning of this video, this is based on our experience, uh, the cruises we have been on. And we have been on Oasis of the Sea, which is the same company. And the food quality and choices is night and day compared to this ship. Now mind you, maybe you can say this ship is an older ship, so that might be the difference, but whatever it is, it is a huge difference with Oasis of the Sea and Radiance of the Sea. Same company, different level of food. Let's talk about the buffet service here on the Radiance of the Seas. I love that they have wind jammer service in carts. They just uh, go around the entire buffet area and serve you drinks. So when you run out of drinks, you don't need to get up and go to the service station to get yourself drinks. They serve it to you. When we had sailed on MSC, the only service that they would bring to the table if you pay for coffee or you paying for drinks then they will serve you but here it regular tea coffee refreshments they bring right to you and I am um, actually really surprised by the wait staff here they clean the uh, plates and the tables really fast they take away dishes that whenever you are done right away they're very attentive and they always ask you if you need anything else they'll be happy to assist you with another pro here in the buffet area is that in the morning times when you do having breakfast breakfast and lunch basically overlap each other there is no gap there's no dead space there's no time where the restaurant is closed they reset and then open for lunch the way they do it is really brilliant so as we mentioned before the buffet is basically split in half and it's mirrored whatever's on the left is on the right hand side so what they do is when it's time for lunch they or just about time for lunch they close half of the buffet they switch that over to lunch they leave the other half to breakfast and then when it rolls into the actual time for lunch they close the other half of the uh, breakfast area and then switch that to lunch and at the end of the day it'll become all lunch so there's a nice overlap some people also have late breakfast so that's the way they that's why they do it that way and i think it's really clever and it makes a lot of sense now we've been on other cruise ship lines and they don't do that they actually close when it comes to breakfast breakfast has a cutoff time then there's a gap where you cannot come into the buffet area to eat anything and then from there they open up for lunch this doesn't do that. They don't do that here. They actually nice and overlap. The only gap they have is after lunch going into dinner. Then there's a short gap of maybe an hour to two. Brilliant. So con, the desserts, they basically repeat themselves, whether it's uh, lunch or breakfast. They take the same dessert and just kind of revamp it by adding maybe some whipped cream on top and then they'll add a little garnish on top so it'll be the same carrot cake without garnish and then the next day it'll be or during lunch they'll put some whipped cream on it or drizzle some caramel on it so it's a little variation of the same pastry so that we're a little bit bummed about we are now at the hot dog house and this is one of the places when you can grab some snack and hot dogs when there is a, a gap between lunch and dinner at the buffet and the main dining area for dinner is not open as yet the only con for this restaurant specifically is that they do serve hot dogs here and pretty good quality too but there is absolutely no beverages here when the buffet area is closed you cannot get drinks over there and in order to get drinks even though you got the food here there is no drinks and to get some drinks you have to go all the way to the solarium to get your beverages but the pro is that they have variety of hot dogs jalapeno and cheese german style chicken and apple and they taste pretty good and the buns are not your regular hot dog buns let's talk about elevators here on the radiance of the seas there are total nine elevators for the ship the ship is pretty small and i feel like it is perfectly enough we are right now in the middle of the ship right next to the 
atrium and in this area you will find six elevators so what's cool about this elevator area is that these elevators are only located on the port side of the ship so if I face towards the front of the ship forward the elevators are only on the left side and when you dock you can see the elevators from the outside of the ship so the elevators are split into two sections right behind me there are four elevators and they have glass facing outside of the ship so it's really cool when you take those elevators you actually get to see what's going on outside you see the weather maybe the port or where are you sailing to and the other two elevators are facing the atrium and as you're taking the elevators up or down you get to see what's going on in the atrium if there are any fun activities going on as soon as you uh, come to the floor that you want to go there are clear markers of the floor number so as soon as the door opens maybe you didn't hear what floor it is you can clearly see what floor the elevator comes to the elevators do come pretty fast and when they do come there is a clear signal that the elevator is here and which elevator you need to take next a um, couple of other pros about this elevator section is that they do have electronic screens even though this ship is pretty old it's uh, 20 years old but they did update with electronic screens and what I like about the screens and it tells you the temperature of your next port it it tells you what time you need to disembark and be back on board and it tells you about the upcoming activity and of course where you are on the ship but besides that technology of course is always good but what I really like is this a little ship model and it allows you to really visually see where you are on the ship so for visual people like me this is a, a really good option to see where you are on the ship and find um, other places where you need to go another cool feature is that you can actually uh, call the elevator with the buttons right here right next to the model ship this next one is a big one entertainment, entertainment yes and of course entertainment would depend on your age and on your personal preferences well when i think about shows on a cruise ship i'm thinking about acrobats costumes great, costumes music set design um light show yes we're talking broadway style of entertainment here the entertainment on the radiance of the sea is definitely lacking first of all the show they had one piano man which they were just singing cover songs next show it was just a vocalist singer and uh, the last show was a tinker show which uh, we actually missed but a lot of people describe it as just bull dancing um, which we're actually glad we skipped because we would be probably really bored at that show okay let's talk about the entertainment here in the main atrium and throughout the ship well that we also find a little lacking there are plenty of times where the performers they do have pianists they have a uh, different uh, like maybe a Latin band that would play and they're really kind of lacking in energy I feel it's and very mellow. It is. It is very mellow most of the time. Um, but also what I noticed on several occasions is after the band finished playing their set, it would just go dead silence in the atrium. And even if there was some type of energy that was built throughout the, the band playing, maybe some people got up and danced, which I have seen. After it's all said and done, it just gets really quiet and everyone kind of disperses and they're like, OK, so where do we go next? What do we do? So there's not even like kind of like a filler music that plays to maybe keep the energy going. Maybe some people just want to stay here and continue dancing. You're already on the dance floor. So it would make sense to kind of have some type of music of the same genre, maybe playing in the background and everyone would just be here dancing. But what happens is it just goes dead silence and everyone kind of disperse and look for the next place to kind of continue partying. And if there is a, the next place to continue partying, it's not overlapping and smoothly go one after the other one. So you might be dancing in one area and you're excited and then there is a half an hour or an hour break until the next uh, 
fun party to attend. Right. And another situation we had, they had a 70s party here, which was really cool. The staircases they have leading up to the next floors, they had dancers dressed in their 70s outfit. It was very energetic. People actually started getting on a dance floor and dancing. They got everybody into it. They were throwing kind of rings with uh, that, that light up. So it was really interactive and they built the energy. But then after that, it just went cold and they wanted people to move to another location, which was Schooners. And when you get there, they also played 70s music to continue the theme, which was great. But the band was so lackluster. It was just like the energy had to be built all over again. And the dance floor never really got crowded. People showed up, but the dance floor never got crowded because it's energy, right? You build and then all of a sudden you just get dropped off and it's like, okay, I got to start all over again. So it's kind of hard to really do that. And there wasn't really a consistent flow. The demographic on this cruise is obviously older mm -hmm. folks and they might enjoy entertainment but there is no entertainment for a younger crowd mm -hmm. at all. There is absolutely no nightlife. The, even though on their itinerary it says that there is a party in the nightclub but when we get there, there was nobody on the dance floor. The DJ was not even trying for us. He would just play one song. The song would end completely. Cold. Cold. It would be that silence until he plays something else. Right. So again, there is no vibe that that continuously flowed. So it just kind of just breaks it every single time. Every time you get excited about a song that might play, it just ends cold and it goes into something just totally different. So it was just very not a good experience at all and this was also a big one for me being that we're on a ship in Alaska right so in Alaska it's either cold or it's rainy which means most of the people are not outside on the deck kind of just laying out and you have a majority of people that want to be outside people are usually inside so you would think that they would have more entertainment going on on the inside to keep people occupied keep people busy but it's always, we spoke to many people and they all agreed. They said the same thing. They were like, oh, I wish there was more going on. Like I have to search for what's happening. It doesn't seem like there's just so much to do. So yeah, that's a con. Even though the ship is 20 year old, I find the decor is pretty nice. And uh, some pieces are pretty modern and I like that they're Alaska themed. So this decoration is uh, ice, so it reminds me of iceberg. I think it's pretty cool. One small con that we noticed here is that some areas of the ship really smell bad. Even though this ship is really small, but I'm actually really impressed with the layout and I'm really enjoying the ship. I really like the atrium. It is a cylindrical shape and it goes all the way from deck 4 all the way up till deck 12. And I love this little balcony. It almost reminds me of a theater and the entertainment carries all the way from deck 4. You can hear it all the way up till deck 12. And they have this chairs set up so you can lounge on a higher deck and still know what's going on uh, on the main atrium and any type of fun activities you can still participate being up on a higher deck it's really cool design now this is a really popular bar especially during for the early diners that come out and then they want to have their drink and maybe start their evening early because as Irina mentioned it is an older demographic so they're not trying to stay up at 12 o'clock 1 o'clock in the morning on the dance floor they eat early and then they come out they have their drinks and they meet up with each other and by 11 o'clock maybe midnight they're done for the night so this is a space for that and I think Skuna bar is very tastefully decorated and it is a themed bar it's not our taste uh, it is ship theme there are a lot of boats there is a globe there is a pianist a lot of wood and as you walk in there is also some barrels and ship theme mm -hmm. but it is a little old school and this is not our favorite area but mm -hmm. for all the demographic they are loving it after the schooners bar there is the colony club and it is also decorated a little bit old school there is a lot of uh, wood dark old, colors older furniture mm -hmm. a little bit of a steakhouse feel right. so it's not really our favorite but 
we understand that it's an older ship. Let's talk about the layout of this ship. It is definitely a pro. We've been on other cruise ships that are roughly the same size, Carnival for one, and it's a maze. For you to get to, say, a bar or, or a lounge or a club or even a dining area, you can't access it from the floor you're on. You either have to go down one floor or up one floor and around the corner, and everything is just like you're in a rat maze. Here on Radiance of the Sea, everything is super simplified, super streamlined. The fact that the atrium is in the middle, like most ships, you can argue that, but here it's like it really doesn't separate everything too much. Things are kind of, it feels open, it feels spacious, and again, very streamlined. To get to certain places, you're gonna get there. You don't have to go up to go down and down to go up, and none of that. Elevators located on one side, beautiful, simple, you know, you wanna get elevators, you come to the port side of the ship or the left side of the ship if you're facing forward. So again, everything is super, super simplified. It's either you, there are things in the front or there are things in the rear. And to get to it, really, really easy. There's absolutely nothing blocking you from getting to where you want to go on any one of the decks. Another con on the radius of the sea is when it comes to photography. So this area that we're in, this is the fourth floor, and right behind Irina filming is one of the major dining areas. And you will see as I'm standing here, people are flowing in and out. So what happens is they usually do in the evening time photography. So when it's dress up night, they will put up a backsplash here. Photographer will be standing here and they're taking photos. Well, what that does, it causes congestion and a bottleneck. So when people are trying to come up or down to the, get to the dining area, the photographers are there and you have to maneuver around them to get to the dining area. I contribute that totally because it's a smaller ship, right? So they don't have, they have limited space Space to take photos and do stuff because we've been on Oasis on the Seas and the photography area is massive. Just the atrium itself is so grand. You see photographers everywhere and they have multiple stations throughout the ship. Here again, the ship is a little bit smaller so it creates congestion. I just love the app. Even It works even before you start sa sailing. You can see all floor plans of the ship, all the decks. So you can see where uh, everything is located and what the ship has to offer. Uh, you can see the menu for every restaurant for every single day. And the menu uh, has regular menu, vegetarian menu, kids menu. So, you be so before you even start sailing, you can actually look forward to dining options if you had sailed radiance of the seas before please let us know in the comments do you agree with our pros and cons and if we missed anything let us know in the comments and share your experience with us we would love to hear that as well if this video helped you make up your mind whether or not you want to sail on radiance of of the seas please click like and share this video with your other travel companions if you would like to support our video please click the heart button below this video thank you so much for watching and as usual just, just be, be out, out with, with us, us. Cheese.